Mark, how have you reflected on Tuesday with a couple of nights sleep and a, and a training session? Uh, how I reflected? Yeah, we've looked at the game. Uh, we know where we are. We know where we are. We know we know what we need to do. Um, just trying to get plenty of rest into the players, a bit of tactical stuff, and uh, and try and get ready for Saturday. It was clear you were quite worried about the welfare of the players, some of the players that are having to play a lot of minutes. How are they doing? And have you adjusted your training sessions appropriately? Of course, we, there's only a limited training we can do for the boys that have been playing. So there's some that need, you know, we're trying to get up to speed and, and some that need topping up, which is a more important group at the minute. Um, and then the boys that like I say, have been playing have been just recovery sessions. And in that couple of days, have you had any sort of further updates on, on Jordan Young or Jordan Stevens? Uh, no, Jordan Stevens has got a scan tonight. Um, and then we're just obviously trying to treat and, and monitor Jordan Young. We spoke briefly about getting other bodies into the building. It, time is of the essence, of mm. course, with the deadline next Thursday, I think it is. Have you spoken to the prospective owners about potentially bringing some players in that, that you've chosen? I think the, the difficulty is with that late in the day now. To get anything that is of quality is very, very difficult, or of a quality that can help us is, is really difficult. So um, that's a difficult one. So with that, 10 games to go, I guess you just have to reiterate that the players that you've got have got to stand up and be counted. That's right, the boys that we've got, I know one thing I know is the game, They're gonna, they'll have a right go at it, and um, you know, I think we're, uh, we're in a, from where we were, I think we're in a decent position, we're, we're points clear, we have good games to play, and, um, and we're really calm, and like I say, we're in a position where we know what we need to do. And the fans have been travelling in their numbers, despite this being the third away game in a row. You've spoken about the support at home. How much of an impact can they have when you're travelling that far as well? Yeah, it's so far, so expensive for the fans. And uh, that Saturday at Chesterfield, they were, we had good numbers there and I think they appreciated our effort. Um, and uh, at Barnet, we had decent numbers there. They've been great fans. Listen, I can only speak, I can't speak highly enough for the supporters since I've come here. They've made me feel very welcome, and um, and we really, as a group, we really appreciate it. And in terms of Halifax, they've had a sort of similar season to yourself, struggling to score goals. Mm. <laughs> Does that change your approach to the game at all? Not really. I think we have to try and do what we do best, which is, you know, in the in the games previous to Barnet, we showed a real sort of good side to us, and, and what we do, we've got. We've got to try and do that really well. If we do that, we can, like we've shown, we can match any team. And it's a, a game against a side sort of close to you in the table. It'd be great to close that gap. Yeah, I mean they've got some. They play some really good football. Um, and the manager there has done a great job. He was care, uh, he was assistant last year. He stepped into it. You know, it's not an easy club. Uh, they haven't got massive finances there, and he, he's done a good job. So. It will be about getting enough points for both of us to stay in, to stay up, and um, they also have the incentive of uh, trying to get to Wembley, don't they? So uh, they'll be looking at that. Yeah, and they've got a long trip to, to Gateshead, haven't they? In the uh, in the semi final, so it'll be interesting for them. Do Barnet play Gateshead? Is it? Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The other one is Halifax, and I'm not sure to be honest. I've not I'm not seen. Come on, don't look at me. <laughs> Altrian. Altrian. Go. So that'd be a good game. Two good football teams. So uh, yeah, I'm sure that they they'll be desperate to get Wembley and another day out as well. And there's another word on that sort of away form, but particularly the Chesterfield performance. Are you going to take into Halifax? Yeah, I thought we played well at, at Chesterfield for for large parts. When you look at the investment in their squad, it, it's um, you know you'd probably fit four times of our squad into theirs, you know, financially, so always gave it a right good go. We had some good periods in the game and defended when we had to. But, uh, we have no God-given right to go to Chesterfield and win, that is for certain, and for us to get a point is, is a fantastic result. And particularly in the first half, it's Barnet defensively solid yeah. as well, so you're taking those positives. Yeah, we, we was a real strong wind in our faces in the first half, and we had to defend loads and loads of corners. We started really well. 
um, and then back foot um, and then at half time incredibly the wind dropped it, uh, no wind at all um, and then I thought once I think we got to was it 70 minutes or whatever for, I thought we were well in the game but it was just two soft goals that that made the difference on the night thanks John Mark and good luck on Saturday thank you pleasure Mark do you feel that, that, that maybe the football gods have sort of turned against you when you look at the situation with injuries and number of games that get postponed and then you get a whole load in a, of away games together it's sort of as though they're all conspiring against you to make life more difficult we can look at it like that can't we but I think there's a lot of teams in the same boat I think that the scheduling this year has been in chaos for the games and you know, there's certain dates when we're not allowed to play a game and it's been really difficult but there's a lot of teams in the same boat if I moan about that I'll get plenty of stick so mm. we know what we've got to do we, we have 10 games we've got to try and cobble together enough fit players to make sure we can keep putting a competitive team out and if we do we'll be alright Looking back you, you, you had a, a fairly long period without a physio do you think that's a, any bearing on the, the number of injuries that you've picked up because I mean now you've got one at least life can sort of look a bit more positively Yeah but I don't think it helps do you know what I mean obviously it's not going to help so no. Um, yeah. Um, opposition from now on, you play a team that's the 16th, 17th, 20th, and 21st. So hopefully, having just played a few of the, the, the leading lights, that should hopefully turn the balance a little bit, shouldn't it? I could turn that round and say the ones we're playing are fighting for their lives and are equally as tough. So mm. I think it's just important that we take each game on its merit and. and I'm yet as a manager to have any easy game. No. No one's ever said to me, here's a 5 0 win. <laughs> I'll three. It's so difficult. And like I've said before, the hardest thing is to win a game of football. People think it's easy and you can play it on a, on a computer game and it's easy, but there's another 11 players trying to stop your 11 players. Mm -hmm. So it becomes the hardest thing in the world to do. And um, you have to respect the opposition. And, and, and we do that. Um, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season, I really am, it's 10 games, we've got our destiny in our own, our, our own hands, we've got a four point plus our, plus our goal difference start, so if you just said that to me when I came in, the position we were, I'd have, I'd have took it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, Barnett, is it almost a game too many, that particular, you know, the, the, the scheduling of it, and it just sort of after such a, a, a lengthy period of games coming up? Well, if we'd have won the game, we wouldn't have said that, would no, we? No, that's true. Uh, we lost the game, so we can say it. But listen, we've done too much whining, and let's just be positive and let's. Uh, yeah. What we've got, we've got a really good changing room of some really good characters that want to do well for the football club. You know, some senior boys in there, Staunch, Fish, you know that, and, and Lawson, people like that that have been here for a while and they understand what it needs and what it's about, and. Uh, I'm sure that they'll be together and uh, they'll get through it. Um, Saturday, long trip yep. to Halifax. Um, any, any, any luck with the injury front? I mean, uh, Hunt and um, Charlie Wakefield, no, no move? Uh, Hunt, he's just started back doing some, some light jogging and, and be another w a while before we get back on the grass. Um, obviously, Jordan Stevens has got a hamstring from the other night. Jordan Young hamstring. Charlie Wakefield still got a sore back. Uh, who else is there? Jack Clark still at Chesterfield, uh, doing his rehab. Um, Scott Pollock has just started training uh, on the grass. Who else? That's about it, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think so. Morgan Williams. Yeah. Yeah, his scan wasn't great, so he's going to be out for, I would say, four to six weeks. And you've lost your two Bristol City youngsters, so yeah. um, that was unfortunate really, because yeah. I mean they made a difference, didn't they? Yeah, I really liked them, thought they were both cracking players and tried their socks off. They're players that we, you know, they're not, they're not what at Bristol City, they're definitely ones that I'd be yeah. interested in, but we understand that, you know, these clubs need them to play games. Yeah. And yeah. in the last part of their loan, we, we couldn't give them those games, so um, I understand. Okay, well, best of luck on Saturday. 
hope it's a good trip, but I hope yeah. it's, it's a successful one. Thank you very much. Yeah, right, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Um, you just touched upon the, the dressing room, obviously the disappointment of the way the goals were conceded on Tuesday, but how important was it to see you know, Smith consoling Bevan after the mistake and the words you said about him as well after the game? Yeah, I think that's natural, isn't it? It's, you know, when you, you look at, um, you look at so Bevan, how Bevan played on Saturday, he's a young player, I mean, 19, is he? 20? So he's, it, it can be. So but it's important for, for Bevan's learning that he understands that when he makes a mistake, he learns from it and moves on to the next game. And I think that's why Bournemouth have, have let him go out because they don't want him to learn. Um, but like I say, the dressing room is good, and anyone that makes a mistake, they get round. And obviously, you've got a free midweek, a rare free midweek. How are you? Are you quite relieved about that, I'd imagine? I am. It's just we've got to get over Saturday first. Oh, so, um, yeah. But it'd be nice for the boys to, some of them that have run an incredible, incredible amount of distance over the last four weeks. You're talking lots of marathons that eventually does take its toll. So, um, it'd be good to give some of those a, a few days off. Thanks very much.